Welcome to How to Yu-Gi-Oh! Let's explain death of free outs. Now, let's talk about it. In this video, I'm going to talk about the death of free outs. What does that mean? With the latest Yu-Gi-Oh! ban list that has come out in TCG, there's been something of note that has happened. The last generic negate has been removed from the game. It is now banned. This means that we are now going to, in my opinion, get healthy Yu-Gi-Oh! again in the competitive scene. Health is a subjective term. I think you mean less nonsense. And things are going to change. With that being said, you can see in front of you the cards that will now become quite popular, I feel, going forward, with Dominance Impulse coming next month in the set Rage of Abyss. These cards include Infinite Impermanence, Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring, and Dominus Impulse. We, if we go to the next slide, we see the other cards that will be Mulchami Perelia, which came out in Info, in Infinite Forbidden, and Mulchami Fioros, which will come out in the next set, which is next month, next, uh, you know, next month in October. And finally, we'll be having Kurikara Divine Incarnate, which I believe will be entering our competitive scene as well as this is a card that has was released last year but i think will have more use this year and i do feel that nibiru is going to see some play but gradually is going to fade as kurikara does more as effects are activating and i feel it'll do more but we'll see how things go but i feel like these uh six hand traps as we see if we go to the first slide and the second slide will determine where Yu-Gi-Oh goes from here and how we will face the game moving forward. And with that being said, I'll go to the next, the next slide after this to showcase what I feel in my opinion of how Yu-Gi-Oh is gonna go from here. As you can see in front of you, you can see, as I can say, a typical snake eye board with at full power, let's say with everything. This is how it would be in the TCG, okay? Absolutely atrocious, absolutely disgusting. You have an Appaloosa there with four monster negates. Uh, Savage is an Omni negate. Baron is another Omni negate. You have uh, Wave King Caesar, which is a uh, summer negate. And then IP Mascarena will go into SP Little Knight, which is another disruption on the opponent's turn. It is absolutely ridiculous with the amount of disruption that is in the game. But what happens, right, when we enter the TCG and we look at Yu-Gi-Oh now going forward with the current ban list? Let's go to the next slide. What do you want? I will give it to you. And let's now have an experiment to see with Yu-Gi-Oh in this slide here what happens when we use some of the cards that are going to be in a future set? Let's say for next year, just an example board. We have Silhouette Trick, Silhouette Rabbit. While a Silhouette Rabbit is a generic card, it's really good, but here's the difference. You will have to play the Silhouette Trick trap card and you will have to activate this trap card on your opponent's turn so that you can get the effect because of the Silhouette Trick effect. The Azamina Rea Severia, while yes, it is a Omni Negate, it's only one. But let's look at the board again and we see here. This is an example board we can see, okay, um, with next, uh, you know, in the next month. Just an example board, whatever here. You have Silhouette, Rabbit, IP Mascarena, and DDD Wave King Caesar. Notice how this board is significantly weaker than it was before. Remember, we don't have Omni Negates here and it's gonna be difficult. The board is much more manageable to deal with. And sure, I believe in the, in the future we will see, I will go over this video and talk about the boards that you will see in the near future. But for now, let's just get you into the mindset of just looking at a current board that you can make if we just keep it simple and basic without adding any extra bits in it. And this is how it looks so far. Not bad, it looks pretty manageable. Plus, with, uh, with as we can say, a cosmic cyclone or things like that, things look manageable and things look that it can be dealt with quite easily. Let us move on. 
Alrighty then, and then we're going to go to this next slide. And as you can see here, this is some of the links that we're going to be using now for the future. And I know what a lot of you are thinking, my students, that Fiend Smith is still in the game. All these cards are still in the game, and we're going to be do dominated by Fiend Smith, by Snake Eyes. But I want to say something very important here. There's a huge difference between generic negates and generic engines. You see, with generic negates, you don't use a lot of space in your extra deck. This means that um, you can just slap in negates in your deck and it doesn't really affect your strategy. Now, the thing with the generic engines, there's only so much engines you can put in your extra deck. Remember, we have an engine of Fiendsmith. We can see from this slide, you have four cards that you need to include, and you have another four cards that you need to include. This is eight cards that only gets you one negate. I want, to I want you to repeat that for a moment. With an extra deck size of 15, eight cards in your extra deck are only going to put one negate, possibly two, onto the field. Just two. Are you serious? Whereas, if this was before, just four cards would have gotten you, five cards rather, would have gotten you into multiple negates. There's a lot of investment that is required here. And this is something that needs to be talked about. As you can see from the first slide here, and you can see from the second slide here. So yes, and if we go into the final board, you can see here, let's say with a board with Fire King Snake Eye, okay? With that, you can see this is what our final board, I believe, would look like, subject to interpretation and with a lot of things in here. Now, this already looks like a board, I think, that is not too intimidating. Don't you agree, my fellow students? Look at this board. There's only one Omni Negate only, and one spell, uh, one spell negate there and a disruption. Remember, that Omni Negate with Silhouette trick, that card has to be activated. That means if you activate a backer removal, you can still do that. And also, look as well, there are two light monsters on the field. This means you are easily prone to a, hmm, let's see, a Super Poly can easily break this board. Let's not give the fact that Super Poly you can fuse either Silhouette Rabbit or the um, Hope Harbinger, or it's the IP Mascarina and the Azamina Silvera. Now, Super Poly can break this board, uh, uh, you know, a timing of Silhouette Trick of blowing up the back row can uh, dehibitate this board. Remember we have uh, Molchami Fioros that is coming into the game next month as well, which can also break this board. There's less hand trap, there's more hand traps in the game. You have less, uh, you have less generic negates as a combo player, so your board is weaker. And getting to a strong board, even if you can do, is gonna be much, much harder. Sure, you have a high ceiling with Snake Eye has a high ceiling with Flamberge, whatever. But I've, as I've always said this, dealing with generic negates means you can have as many summons as you want. But if your end board is significantly weaker, or we can say absolute garbage, then you can have 10, 20 infinite summons. But if you're not ending on anything respectable, you might as well not have those summons in the first place or have that power. Power is useless if it is not used correctly. And this is why it is great to have generic negates gone in Yu-Gi-Oh. As I was saying before, it means we have boards which are much less obnoxious and much less uh, difficult for the second player to deal with. And sure, I will go over in uh, the, some future slides to see a potential board that can be made with Ubel, which is a little bit crazy, but overall, you will see the difference. So let's move on to the next slide. Okay, so let's see this slide right here. And so we see the Unchained Soul of Rage. We see Phantom of Ubel, which is an Omni Negate. We see Unchained Soul of Rage, which means you can link on your opponent's turn into the SP Little Knight. We have the DDD Wave King Caesar, and we have the Varudras. They're the XYZ, the rank 10. In this board, we see two Omni Negates, one Disruption, and one Summon Negate. 
Now, this is a much, much easier board to deal with. And another thing you've got to consider is that if you were to make the silhouette a rabbit in here, in this deck, you would add another brick into your deck as you'd have to play the trap. So the more we put in this extra deck, the more bricks you are playing. And the thing is, is that while this Ubel deck is looking great and the, as we can say, the Snake Eyes deck is looking great, you have to remember to just play this uh, high wave King Caesar package where half of your extra deck is completely gone and more than likely you're only going to have two negates in there okay just two one of them will is essentially a brick it is not a, in a perfect world in a perfect universe it is not exactly right another omni negate as you have to activate the trap silhouette tricks successfully in order to negate that card so back row removal can definitely destroy that there is much more ways as we can see here we also have the fact is that this board is also weak to super poly again super poly is weak to this board um, just some uh, dark ruler no more can break this board quite easily. We have, and remember, these are only two Omni Negates. Uh, there's just so many things that we can do to break this board that this doesn't feel like a board or like a game where it's going to be hard to deal with. Overall, let's go to the conclusion where I conclude my thoughts. Right. And so we'll go to the overall conclusion. So when we look at Yu-Gi-Oh! right now in the TCG, I know a lot of players in the community are looking at it and thinking that Snake Eyes is very strong, Snake Eyes is very powerful, and just the meta decks can still do what they want to do, and Snake Eye being the absolute dominant force. But I want to say something that's extremely important and that we, as most people in the community, haven't realized. One of the reasons why pile decks, as I like to call them, more combo decks, has dominated Yu-Gi-Oh! for so long is that they could pivot. They could pivot or go to these generic negates, right, which could deny play. But with the banning of Appaloosa, those generic negates are now gone. There are no more generic negates in Yu-Gi-Oh! Sure. They don't exist. No Omni Negates are there anymore. They are now just specific Negates that you need. There's a, whole, there's a huge difference between generic Negates and type Negates like DDD Wave High King Caesar and Hope Harbringer, which, which, are not, which are type Negates and not generic. What generic Negates means is that you can place this on the board and... As a combo player, you are not threatened by anything as you can just pivot and just cheat out and you're not afraid of anything. However, with type negates, it's completely different. You have to organize your extra deck or your plays in a certain way. Just because you can make, you can always make um, DD key wave hiking Caesar doesn't necessarily mean you can also in the same turn make a rank eight. It is completely different. Again, just because you can make Silhouette Rabbit and Azamina Fusion, which are two Omni Negates, doesn't necessarily mean you can make that other Negate as well. The thing about Type Negates that makes them balanced is that they use resources, right? They aren't free. Your extra deck is limited. Please remember that in Yu-Gi-Oh! we only have 15 cards in our extra deck. More than half of those cards are going to be used to simply just get you into just two cards in your negation. Two cards in your negate if you're a combo deck, right? Or if you're as a mean, if you're Snake Eyes, okay? This is extremely, this is a lot, this is a huge investment for basically just two things it's completely utterly pointless it's just a whole investment for simply no reason and take into account that if things go wrong and things will go wrong at this point in time obviously if you're a combo player you have no pivoting factor you don't have a plan b remember one of the reasons why combo has been so powerful has felt so has felt like 
we cannot beat it and has always created that image of it is unbeatable, I can't do anything, my fellow students, is because they can pivot and they always have a plan, B, C, or D. But when, you, when we remove the generic negates in Yu-Gi-Oh! and now they're all gone from the game, all of a sudden, you have no pivoting points anymore. All of a sudden, the hand traps in Yu-Gi-Oh! matter right now. Part of the reason why hand traps have not mattered in Yu-Gi-Oh! for a long time, especially against combo players, is because the generic negates have been keeping them safe from hand traps. Hand traps, in my opinion, are, perf are designed to do one thing, to stop overextension and to stop unfair boards being created. However, with the appearance of generic negates, these are the cards that have been keeping the hand traps in keeping the hand traps at bay, thus allowing these disgusting boards to be created by the combo player, these, uh, you know, turn skip boards. However, with the generic negates gone now, in the TCG anyway, the ability to make these turn skip boards is much, much harder because the hand traps that we have will disincentivize or rather will make it much more difficult to make those boards sure you could make a board like the one i've showed you with the ubel board and possibly add stuff in there but are you sure you're not going to play into let's say hmm, uh kurikara or you know fioros you could play into that but Maybe you that means you're also playing into uh, Dominus Impulse. Remember, Ash Blossom exists and Impulse exists and every deck's gonna play that right now. And in our current hand trap wars, the only hand, the hand traps that will have been famous have only been Imperm and Ash Blossom. And now we will have two cards that will enter the scene, which will be, we will have four cards entering the scene in our hand trap lineup, which will be Mulchami Porelia, Mulchami Fioros, and Impulse. So in total, the staples for hand traps will be Impulse, Fioros, Porelia, Ash Blossom, Imperm, and... Kurikar Divine Carnet. I do feel Nibiru will be in the game, but I feel it's going to be dropped in time because Kurikara will do that much more, as it will also de incentivize um, decks from making these big, absurd boards. With Nibiru, it tributes all monsters on the field. However, Kurikara only tributes your opponent's monsters. This means it already baits effects and what it does there is that it allows you to break the board without it's a board breaker without having to use dark room or more board breakers or things like that and with that that's all i've got to say in this video tune in next time as we'll talk more about things with your Yu-Gi-Oh sensei here in Yu-Gi-Oh. with that being said i'll see you in the next video goodbye we come to the end of this video. So, as I like to say, you are one step closer to becoming a Yu-Gi-Oh! Master. My fate, right, is in your hands.